Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Louis, Louis and Mary for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, maybe just to give you an update on some new mites uh, that uh, are affecting tropical food crops. Uh, the lychee, that one, you're probably familiar with that uh, mite, very critical problem that we have. Uh, I'm going to give you an update on that, on the, the, the research that we're doing uh, that night, and also talk about some mites, new mites on papaya, and also on mame, mame support. So we can start with the lychee mites. <clears throat> So, so first of all, there's a number of people working and trying to uh, come up with a workable solution for this uh, mild problem. Very serious uh, invasive uh, test that arrived here in 2018. So we need to acknowledge that uh, we presented work from a lot of uh, people. So this is this is the mild uh, pictures taken with a scanning electron micrograph. Yes. Very, very small uh, mite. You see here the mouth parts, and he uses the mouth parts to, to feed on the, the leaves of the lychee. These holes that you see here are the punctures. It has uh, like some stylus that it uses to puncture the leaf. But this is uh, the, the physical damage that is not so much important. Uh, the issue is that the, when it pierces, it also introduces a saliva with some substances that induce uh, the formation of this, uh, we call arenia, is a proliferation of hairs, and the, the leaves turn uh, all hairy. Usually the, the damage starts in the new growth, the new flush of the tree is usually very important, it's when the plant is more susceptible. Uh, but as the infestation progresses, uh, you, you can see it uh, infesting the underside of the leaves, but also stems, petioles, the inflorescence, uh, and the fruit. So the, the mite tends to accumulate uh, in the plant and it can cover virtually every plant part. And the mite uh, is native to Southeast Asia and is well distributed in, in tropical Asia. It's also present in Australia. Uh, yeah, we have it in Hawaii for a long time. In fact, the mite was described in Hawaii in the 1940s. It's, it's not native to Hawaii, but it was first discovered and described there. And in 2010, uh, it reached the Americas. It was found uh, in Brazil. So they have uh, reported uh, an 80% uh, yield reduction because of this mite. Uh, we have similar reports from India, similar decrease in yield because of and uh, unfortunately, in 2010, we detected the mite. Um, the epicenter of the infestation was on Pine Island in Lee County. So, the uh, first thing we did it was uh, survey this area together with FDAX, and we found that the, the majority of the plants, the vast majority, were on Pine Island, only a few trees in the continental uh, part and in Cape Coral. So, uh, Initially, that suggested that the mite could be eradicated because it was confined to an island, right? Uh, so FDAX established a, a quarantine to the county, so no village movement was allowed in the entire county. And, and the first thing that we did was to uh, characterize those populations, those mites. We got the populations from different parts of the world specimens and we analyze them molecularly to try to determine the origin and the diversity of mites. Um, and very interestingly, the, the populations uh, here from Florida, they group very well with Taiwan. They are uh, genetically identical. Uh, so that means that they have the same origin. And we don't know if the mites that are from Florida came from Taiwan, but they have the same origin. 
And this this uh, information is important for future biological control uh, projects to see uh, where is a good place to look for natural enemies of these spikes. Another thing that we did immediately after the quarantine was implement was to develop a, a post harvest treatment uh, that consists on oil dips, uh, fruit dips on oil paraffinic oil, sorry, uh, to disinfest the fruit from the mites. So uh, a very simple uh, treatment where harvested fruit is dipped in this paraffinic oil, and uh, this was used by some growers and allowed movement. Uh, of fruit from the quarantine area. And the most important thing is that the, the treatment didn't affect the fruit quality. So uh, it was uh, something positive. Uh, as many of you know, the Florida Department of Agriculture established an eradication program that in few words consists of removing the canopy trees, eliminating all the foliage, hat racking the trees, uh, painting with uh, whitewash to protect from summer and uh, apply a series of treatments to protect that uh, the establishment of, of the canopy. And the treatment uh, per se uh, was effective. If you can bring a tree, a healthy tree back, unfortunately, uh, and a few months later, the trees get reinvested. This is a very insidious uh, mite. So, uh, Despite all those efforts, the, the mite uh, simply spread uh, in 13 uh, uh, counties and finally reached uh, Miami Dade, where the commercial production is uh, concentrated. So, uh, as many of you know, the quarantine was lifted in November 2022. And now we're left with the, with the mite. We for sure have to learn to live with, with the mite. And now we're uh, doing research to learn how to live with it. It is a, indeed a very powerful uh, species with a great ability to spread. Uh, a trek we found the night uh, in February 2022, uh, the first uh, tree in our, in our road, and uh, we were able to document exactly how the, the mite uh, spreads. So uh, in, in a period of 100 uh, days, uh, more than 80% of the trees got uh, infested naturally without any, any treatment. These uh, uh, heat maps here show more or less yeah, yeah. the situation. So you see here, uh, 90 days after the, the initial uh, detection, 150, 210, 270, and 300 days. You see how the intensity of the color uh, increases. Now, every single tree. Is infested with the, with the mite. So, in less than one year, the mite is spread to all the trees in our grove with 190 trees. Right now, uh, all of them are infested. There's a couple that are not infested, but only because they have another problem and it's not that suitable uh, for them for the mite. So, unfortunately, I can anticipate that every single light tree here uh, is going to be infested with this mite. There's no way of uh, getting rid of the mite. We need to learn how to live with another interesting result from the observations at Trek is that the roosters seem to be more tolerant than, than street parts and, and Mauritius. We found a, a less infestation of the rooster and less development uh, of the mite in the rooster. Uh, we need to run some uh, additional experiments to, to verify this. But it was notorious that the boosters were less affected than the sweethearts in the Mauritius in, in our field. So we are conducting research in two fronts. Uh, the first on the mite plant interactions. So we're trying to determine how the mite is inducing this uh, malformation of the plants. And uh, more importantly, uh, developing an integrated pest management uh, tools for dealing with this uh, mite. So in, the, in terms of the mite plant interactions, we are trying to characterize the saliva of this mite. It's a tiny mite. We need to collect uh, a sufficient amount of the saliva of this mite 
and characterize it. We, we want to know what proteins are inside the saliva and how uh, uh, this is inducing uh, the formation of the arena on the plant. So we are going to use some techniques like the transcriptonics uh, to see how a healthy tree uh, compares to a, an infested tree in terms of gene expression. And that gives you an idea of what is the mechanism, what is really happening uh, inside the plant uh, using this damage. An area where we have made uh, some significant progress is in the chemical ecology. So we've been studying what the volatiles the infested plants uh, produce and how that affects the behavior of the mite. So we have characterized some volatiles that uh, increase the, the, the activity of this mite. We have a very recent publication about this. So in the future, it's possible that uh, once we have a better idea of uh, how the mite is interacting with the plant, we can come up with a, a smart idea on how to, to manage it. Uh, for now, we are uh, exploring like uh, the conventional integrated pest management tactics that, uh, as, as you know, we need to have a good way of monitoring the mite, the cultural, physical, biological, chemical, and regulatory actions to mitigate the mite. So, for monitoring purposes, uh, it's a very tiny mite that is difficult to quantify. But we have noticed that the process of perineum formation uh, is, uh, is important. It has some phases that we can use to monitor the, the progression of the, of the mite infestation. I've noticed that there are four distinct stages. We call this hyaline, where the, the perineum here is still translucent, then it turns white, later it turns amber in color, and then Turns dark brown. We notice that the, these two first stages, the hyaline and white, are very important. And this can be easily detected. That this is when the problem starts, and this is when you have to take action. When they are hyaline and white. When they are amber in color, the population already feels that this is when we have more mites on the plant, and this is when there's more risk of spread in the, in the growth. So uh, we need to look for hyaline and white uh, arena and try to mitigate at that point. This coincides with the, the period of flushing of the plant. And uh, of course, uh, mitigate, don't let it get to the amber color phase, it's when the upper coloration of the, the mice. The dark brown color is with the arena already died. The mice already evacuated the, the, the arena. So this, this is a, a Important aspect when you're looking for the symptoms, look at the early symptoms. In terms of chemical control, we have tested the uh, many potential acaricides. Only these three are currently available uh, for use in lichens. Uh, we can say abamectin and sulfur, but we have tested the different acaricides, conventional acaricides that have the uh, different modes of action. And uh, we are testing them in a two-step uh, evaluation. First, as a, a prophylactic uh, treatment to protect the, the trees from the mite infestation. So basically, we take a, a healthy plant, we apply the treatment, and then we expose it to the mite and see if the treatment prevents uh, the mite from colonizing the plant. And a curative uh, treatment where we have a plant that is already infested, already has the mite. We apply the treatment and we evaluate if, if the treatment kills them. So uh, we've been conducting most of these trials in the quarantine because it was a regulated test in a quarantine greenhouse that we have a track. Yeah, some very large experiments. And uh, for the prophylactic treatments, uh, we have some very promising results. Sulfur is our reference because it's already labeled and it's efficient. But we found these uh, three other uh, chemistries, carboxymate, pyrimidine, alcohol, carboxylate, and that provided the uh, same results as a uh, sort of complete protection uh, of, of the trees. So 
it's uh, very uh, encouraging. The problem is that only solver is registered. So now we're working hard to try to give this other uh, project, uh, other products also, also registered. Unfortunately, and none of the curative treatments work. So if you have a tree infested and you spray with any of these chemicals, you're not really killing the mice. Uh, so that is a, a that is a problem. And so right now, the only chemistry that is approved is sulfur. It's good as a protective treatment, but it's not killing the mice that are already in the system. But sulfur has uh, several limitations. Perhaps you're aware of them. You cannot apply it at very high temperatures because it can cause phytotoxicity. It's incompatible with most other pesticides, especially with oils. And it's easily washed up. So it's a good tool. It can also be applied in organic air production, but we need more products. So uh, we are conducting some trials with IR4 to get these products uh, registered. And we have uh, a collaboration with uh, Nestle in Brazil, an expert on surfactants, because we have noticed that uh, this, you see this arena here. It's uh, so tightly packed with this the air that it's almost hydrophobic. The the water doesn't enter the arena. So we're looking at looking at sort of patterns or things that we can add to the spray solution so there's more penetration to really uh, reach the place where the, where the mice are inside the, the arena. Uh, we have also made uh, uh, several tests of essential oils and, and products that be used in uh, organic uh, agriculture. So you see uh, several different oils here. Unfortunately, so far as a prophylactic treatment, we haven't seen much of uh, uh, effectiveness. So you see here, this is sulfur. So sulfur provides uh, much better results than any of the other uh, oils that we have uh, tested so far. However, uh, this uh, thyme garden and thyme oil uh, provided some promising results uh, as a curative treatment, better than sulfur in many cases. So we need to uh, work uh, more with this thyme garden, but it uh, seems like a, a, a potential uh, treatment uh, for, for this mice. Uh, another important component in the management of this mice is the pruning cultural practices. You see here, this is a trial that we have a trick right now where we prune the hedge uh, every other row. We're going to evaluate the next year production. But uh, well, we have noticed that the sanitation or pruning has a favorable effect. I told you that uh, curative treatments don't work. But when you combine with sanitation, there's an additive uh, effect. So it really contributes uh, to the management uh, of the mite. And, and something uh, that is uh, very important, uh, we notice in our monitoring at track that uh, most of the infestation is in the outer part of the tunnel. So with a header, uh, you can actually remove most of the infestation with a uh, with the pruning, you can remove most of the mite. However, uh, I want to emphasize that if you're going to prune, you have to be ready to apply treatment to protect the new flush that is going to be produced. If you prune and don't apply uh, anything, you might exacerbate the, the, the problem because the mite likes the new growth. If there's no treatment to protect that new growth, the mite is going to produce. So a combination of pruning and uh, some acaricide treatments is then the way uh, forward. So pruning uh, to remove the outermost part of the canopy. It's also beneficial to synchronize the flush. The idea is uh, most likely after the harvest to do a post harvest pruning where you remove most of the of the infestation, synchronize the flushing, and then apply some treatments to reestablish that kind of this that is kind of the idea of the management. Of the in 
terms of biological control, uh, we have seen a number of the predatory mites naturally associated the, with the mite, uh, visiting the arena and actually feeding on the on the mites. But so far, uh, there's no indication that these uh, predators are really controlling the populations of the light sharing the mite. So. See, we have already five uh, species of predators naturally associated with the, with the light mite, but so far, I uh, don't think that they have the attributes to be unaffected by more research. Uh, another biological control agent that is highly prevalent is this uh, fungus, Chisotella consonus. We find that uh, very often, when we see the dark brown arena and the later stages of the arena, uh, uh, infesting, you see this uh, fungal stages infesting the arena. However, we always find that this in this later stages when the damage already passed. So, with the idea of to mass produce this fungus and apply it at, at the beginning when the arena is highly white, uh, unfortunately, this is not available. But it's something. Uh, so this is an update. We have four people working on this. Uh, we recently got a grant from Airbus to continue uh, working and uh, developing these uh, treatments. And uh, just to summarize, I think moving forward, there are going to be two critical periods in, in the management of this virus. After the, the harvest, uh, post harvest sanitation pruning and some treatments to reestablish the canopy, and also some treatments that should be applied before the flowering. Before the flowering, when you have a, a outbreak and the, the, the new growth that is going to turn into inflorescences, that is another critical period to. Right now, we have sulfur as the only treatment uh, available, but hopefully very soon we will have more, more uh, products to apply. Okay, uh, now let's move on to uh, Mamey uh, support. And so early this year, we, found, we received a sample that was looking like this. My first thought that it was a uh, herbicide damage. Typical uh, herbicide damage, we have this uh, type of malformation. But after uh, looking closely at that uh, uh, sample, we found out a pod mite, uh, type of mite, the same family as, as the Lycherinos mite, a tiny mite uh, here in the pot. Only there, the mite only infests this growing tip of the plant. It doesn't infest the fruit, it doesn't infest the, the leaves. So you find it there. Situation is somewhat analogous to, to the light cherry nose mite because you know the mame is a, a plant that has a lot of uh, cares, a lot of tritons. So the mite is there inserted in the but it's not there exposed. So that uh, has implications for, for, for the manager. And so this is likely a, a, a new species. Uh, you have some of the characters that we used to describe. Right now, we are making the drawings and making some molecular uh, analysis. This is a, a new mite, a new species. We probably are going to name it a Lopez Mame. This mite is uh, like a Seria lichi, a Seria a Lopez Mame, because they are characteristic of these families that they are highly specific to the plant. And it's likely a new species. Uh, it's not uh, likely an invasive species. Uh, it's likely a species that was here for a very long time and is probably present in Central America uh, and in other areas where Mame is grown, but it has, it has been overlooked because it's so tiny and so difficult to work. Uh, but uh, so far, we have uh, sampled 18 farms. Um, and only, only one uh, has been negative. Uh, all the other farms have the mite. So it's widespread uh, in the north, south, and in the middle of our production area here that I have right here. 
it's very widespread. And, and this is the damage that, that we are observing. This is how a healthy a baby should, uh, should look. And this is the damage uh, that we uh, observe. So, Sample words? Green. Green support and all. No, we haven't sampled it. It might be possible. That this might sometimes test the group of plants that are closely related. But so far, only the main support. It's possible. Again, more, more uh, symptoms. This is a uh, test that very interesting looks like, and this is how it should look. And this is going to be another challenging uh, article uh, to, to work with. Uh, fortunately, uh, in this case, even though uh, we have a less acres of made and other food crops, we have more. Uh, Pesticides that are already registered for a man. So you have several acaricides. And I already started some preliminary trials with pentaloximate with a, a grower, just preliminary. And uh, we've seen some uh, good effects of peroximate, uh, reducing the damage. But um, we're going to have to go on the trial and most likely collaborating uh, with you. To test some some uh, products uh, against uh, this mite. Uh, we have sulfur. It's a good food. Sulfur is also always a good food because it's a label for the production, and um, it's a widely used uh, parasite. But these three, from the ultimate, are making a spirit of them has a great potential to control this uh, mite. We also have some um, oils, but, uh, sulfur, and some, some oils, some um, birational products that could be used in uh, organic production. Um, but this is um, very recent, there's a new species of problem that we're going to have to be dealing with uh, in the future. This is not going to kill the trees, it's an important pest, um, but uh, yeah, we need to find a management solution that is not the end of the world for uh, it's probably been causing damage for many years and we just simply didn't uh, notice at all. So, uh, lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, mites associated with the uh, papayas. Those of you who grow papayas with mites. Are the most persistent uh, pests of papaya. Always there, so right? they are responsible for the most sprays. So uh, we conducted a survey in 20 orchards in Miami Dade, Broward, and Lee counties to see which mites were associated with papaya. And we found a complex of the spider mites, and those three species, but then uh, the two spot the spider mite. Uh, so by far the most important is present in all the plantings in all three towns is this mite here. And the growth mites also, this is interesting, but they infest also the growing tip of the plant and they cause these symptoms here that are very similar to viral symptoms. So sometimes uh, they are uh, misdiagnosed. Sometimes people think that they have a virus and are these mites causing and we found a new mite, uh, which is Calacarus flagiceta. Uh, flagiceta, sorry. Uh, it's a new report uh, for, for Florida. It's also a, an area of York. It's tiny mites, the same as the lychee mite in the, in the mamey mite. This one is uh, special because it, it, it infests the upper side of the leaves. Most of the mites do like the, the underside. This one in particular likes the the upper side of the It's uh, not a very well known uh, species. We only have some reports from Brazil, Colombia, the Caribbean, also Hawaii, and now here uh, in Florida. But 
and uh, an intern from Colombia that studied the life cycle uh, life. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny mile to see you the, the eggs uh, so drop the very difficult to protect in the, in the plant. And uh, the life cycle is uh, approximately 13 days in complete one, one life cycle. And we characterize the damage. This one is interesting because it then produces a uh, leaf kerning, but the leaf scrolls upwards. And the other mites cause the leaf curling but downwards. This one, the, the leaf curls uh, upwards. It's easy to, to identify the damage uh, by this uh, mite. But um, so far, it's a new species, but it's not terrible at uh, best. And the most uh, persistent and damaging test that is uh, two spotted spider mites. It's uh, like I said, it's present in every single planting, almost every papaya plant has uh, this mite. And it's responsible for the most uh, sprays. We also looked at the natural enemy biocontrol agents of these uh, uh, mites. We found three species. This neocellulose uh, fungus pinosus. It's an interesting case. It's the first time that we see it here in Florida. It's an Asian predator that was introduced here. So we hear a lot about damaging invasive species, but sometimes predators are beneficial also. Make it here and transport it with plants. This is one of those uh, cases, a beneficial uh, predator. And uh, it's only two mites, and the risky and Pinkosilus persimilis. These are commercially available and are released uh, uh, by growers. So we, we found these three predators, but this new one, uh, Asian predator, was far, by far the most common. Uh, uh, so this uh, So this this predator is from Asian origin, is commercially sold in Asia, targeting the uh, and we got it here uh, for free. The first report was in the, in the Caribbean uh, in the early uh, 2000s. We were looking for the red palm mine, but now uh, it's moving around. Uh, it's in Central America and the US. Uh, we have it uh, in Florida and it's very widespread. So it's uh, a case of uh, biological control. Uh, we tested as a Biological control agent from uh, spider mites in papaya, and they have very good results, almost better than the, the, the other factors that are uh, released. So, this is a resource that we didn't know we have, uh, it's now uh, available naturally here. Uh, so, those are uh, new mite species that I want be uh, aware of. I also want to be to make aware uh, make you aware of the uh, expertise that we have here at Trek. Uh, we have uh, uh, a big group of uh, researchers working on mites and acarology that is a uh, study uh, mites. So we have already uh, organized uh, two workshops in the past two years, been very well attended. Uh, mostly by uh, people in the nursery industry that wanted to bring it to your attention. If someone wants to learn more about mites, it's a week long uh, workshop where you get to really learn how to identify mites, how to uh, work with them, how to control them. So, we're going to be uh, offering this uh, next year, second week of May. And it's, it's available. And that's all I have. I would be happy to answer any questions. What I teach you is investing in right now. You said to read, I think, to read something. Yeah. 